are back. It's us again. The, the Horror, Horror Guys. Guys. I'm Kevin. I'm Brian. And it's Screen Week. Ah, I can never do that too much. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, this time we're going to watch all five Scream movies. Scream 1, Scream 2, Scream 3, Scream 4, Scream 5. Nope, Scream. Scream um, again. Why not Scream 5? Scream. Just Scream. Yeah, I saw a thing where they, they just took, call it scream. You t- took the number five and replaced the S, and it looks like five cream. Oh, maybe that's Funny why. they didn't go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> and scream six is in the works It has one been day. gotten the green light, yes. And what will they call that? Hmm. Scream two, scream six. Hmm. Don't know. I guess we'll find out. All right, well, before we get going, we do want to mention that we have multiple copies of Scream 2022 to give away. If you are signed up to HorrorBulletin.com, our weekly review email list, you are automatically enrolled to get that. And if you're not, you've got a week to do it. And we might talk about some spoilers here. So oh, beware. We're going to limit the spoilers on the new show. Yeah, limited. But, yeah. yeah. If you want to read the spoilers for all five movies... Horrorguys.com, you could just do a search for Scream. It'll come right up, whichever one you want. But on, at least on the new movie, we're not going to spoil it too much. Okay. I assume there's most people, people getting, have not There's heard, people not getting their own, you know, getting chased and stabbed. Oh, spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> ha ha. I spoiled the whole movie. And there are screams. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, sign up over at HorrorBulletin.com or check out the full spoilery synopses and reviews and everything on the horrorguys.com website anything else going on this week mm, there's some bonus movies too some bonus oh, screens yeah, you we, should mention those we've got five scream movies going out this week and we've got two more screamy movies going on in the newsletter the bonus reviews scream blackula scream and it's really kind of Which misleading. Which was the sequel to Black Hill. He only screams once in the movie. Yeah, it's not about him screaming. <laughs> no. That would be entertaining, too. Yeah, we did Black Hill, uh, I don't know, three or four months ago, and this mm-hmm. is the sequel to it, and there is no third one, so that, that covers all the Black Hill series. I liked it okay, but I thought the first one was a lot better. So did I, yes. And then we did The Screaming Skull from 1958. And you know what the best part of The Screaming Skull is? It screams? The title. Yeah, and the poster. The poster is Oh, awesome. the poster's pretty yeah. cool, yeah. The movie itself was pretty meh. Oh, it was very meh. Yeah. It, it, it leads you down one path and takes you somewhere completely different. Mm-hmm. And not necessarily in a good way. Right. All right, well, the first one we're going to do this time is the original Scream. And I, I'll tell you what, Scream is probably my least favorite of all the big horror franchises. Hmm. It's kind of repetitive. It's kind of tedious, I think. I liked the first one a lot because it was new. It was fun. It was innovative. It was witty. And then part two, they're like saying, oh, look how clever we are. We're going to do the same thing again. And we'll do a movie within a movie thing. And, and number and the three, third one and look how witty and clever we are. We're going to twist we're gonna it on its side again. We're going to revisit all that stuff again. It yeah. stopped being witty and fun and uh, clever on the third movie. Yeah, I think the second movie they used they they called it hip in the advertising. When a mm. movie calls itself hip, you're mm. screwed. <laughs> it goes downhill sign. from there. But yeah, okay, none of them are truly awful, but they are just very very repetitive in my opinion. As and I remember they, you saying, "Are we going to read all these synopses because it's just stab this, run this, scream well, there?" Well, yeah, they because they all kind of you have that similarity to them. You know? Yeah. I would say definitely watch the first one, and if you want to, skip ahead and watch the most recent one. Yes, I agree completely. And I think everything in the because middle, I you think could they, skip. I think they get a little less good with each one. The, the second, third, fourth. The new one? And I was, I, was, I, I don't know, you know if, if you got that impression fully from me, but I was actually angry at the f- ending of the fourth one. Like, oh, really? 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The new yeah. one, the 2022 movie, uh, kind of re- you kind of got to see the first one first. Yes. There is some stuff in uh-huh. there that builds on that one. Yeah. And but I, I don't the think it references the others very was much. was definitely a step in the right direction. They're also was... old looking, though. Well, the original people, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Time has passed. Some of them had some work done, and but some of them had... are just looking old. But they had some, some young folks in there, too, and 
Yeah. Well, but yeah, I, you got to have somebody to survive to part but six. In, in order of my preference would definitely be one, five, two, three, four. You're saying two, three, and four went downhill in a row? Yes. And okay. Then, and then step five goes upward. Reinvigorated. I thought so. In the requal. And hopefully the sixth one will be even better and not I'm like that downward trend sure again. I'm sure it will be. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, okay, so let's get on with it. Number one was from 1996, Spoiler Free Judgment Zone. Kevin, what's a spoiler? Spoiler free. I've lost my place. Please stand by. Ah, even a second watching after knowing all the spoilers, it was, it was still a fun movie. Great script, good acting, top-notch special effects, and if you're lucky to have your mind untainted by spoilers at this point, by all means, check it out. Yeah, every one of these movies has... Or even if you have and you can't quite remember because you saw it when it came out at the theater, maybe. That's me. I couldn't remember who did it. All those years ago. I remembered it was two people. I couldn't tell you which two, Some time has passed, so it it was still definitely... I think this was the third time I'd seen the first one. Okay. And still really enjoyed it. Okay, first of all, if you have not seen these, you should probably at least see the first one, spoiler free. And they do so. build on each other. I think that you oh, really yeah, can't, you can't in jump in and see the third one and really get it. Yeah. yeah. Got to see first, second, third, fourth. Yes. I think they planned it that yeah. way. They, yeah. they yeah. absolutely do build on each other. <laughs> yes. Except for the last one, which seems to skip over some of the dumb stuff in the middle. I, I think you could almost get away with... But no, you really should see the first one, then the fifth one. Yeah. All five of these have a little bit of an element element of a whodunit and a twist ending. So, yeah, I'm, we're going to spoil the crap out of all the old ones, I think. Yeah. All right. So, Casey answers the phone and tells the guy that he has a wrong number. Then he calls back and she tells him to call a 900 number. A what? Are those still a thing? Barely. They, they still were, have they 900? Were, I've never, they were bigger then. I haven't seen an ad for a 900 number no, in no, decades. No, no, not like they used to. Well, he calls back again and says she's about to watch a scary movie. They talk about Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street as she walks through the house. Then the call takes a turn for the creepy. He's watching. She locks the doors. The voice on the phone has her boyfriend says her boyfriend Steve is tied up outside. Then they play movie trivia over the phone and Steve pays the price for wrong answers. She sneaks out the back door and makes a run for it, but he catches her and kills her. Wait a minute, that was Drew Barrymore. She was top bill. Yeah, she was supposed to be the star the of the movie. She's the big star of the movie. So they start right out with psyching you out. Like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is the main character, and she dies in the first couple minutes. Uh-huh. We then cut to Sydney, who gets a scare from her friend Billy. They make out for a bit, and it's clear that he's a big movie fan. The next morning, reporters and police are all over the school because of what happened to Casey and Steve last night. Reporter Gail Weathers is reporting live on campus. Sydney's friend Tatum tells Sydney what happened last night. Meanwhile, Sheriff Burke and Deputy Dewey talk to Mr. Hembry, the school's principal. The Fonz. Sydney, Billy, Tatum, Randy, and Stuart talk about murder after school. And the first 20 minutes of this is just introducing all these characters. All these people, all these suspects, all these victims. Sydney goes home and we get a few scenes that look like something scary might be happening, but it really isn't. We hear on the news that Sydney's mother was raped and murdered in the same town just last year. Sydney's phone rings and it's the same voice that Casey dealt with last night. Do you like scary movies, Sydney? What's your favorite scary movie? And just for reference, the, the voice on the phone does not sound like the Grand Nagus in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> that bad, huh? Uh, no, I didn't say it was bad. It sounded a bit like the Grand Nagus. <laughs> the masked man attacks her inside the house, but he's interrupted when Billy climbs into her window again. After a minute, she looks at Billy funny and runs away from him. She runs downstairs and finds Dewey, who has found the killer's mask outside. Billy is then arrested. Number one suspect. We soon see that Sydney doesn't like Gail much when she punches her in the face. Gail's writing a book about Sydney's mother's murder. Sydney goes home with Tatum and gets a call from the killer there. Ooh, maybe it wasn't Billy. Sydney and Gail argue over Cotton Weary, who was the man found guilty of killing Sydney's mother. Various students at school the next day wear the killer's costume, which we find out is easily available all over town. It's not Michael Myers. It's one of those mass-produced things you can find in any drugstore. Mm-hmm. School gets canceled, so Stuart decides to throw a party that night. 
Principal Himbury gets a little bit creepy with a mask and some scissors, but we soon find out that, no, he's not going to be the killer, he's going to be the next victim. Stuart and Randy argue over the rules of horror and movie formulas at the video store. And this is probably what this whole series is best known for, is having these rules that everybody knows, these tropes from movies. Mm -hmm. If you have sex, you're going to die. It's always the good girl who survives and stuff like that. Never go off by yourself, things like that. I'll be back, and you're dead. I'll be right back. Yeah. They talk about Sidney's father, who can't be found and isn't where he said he would be. Randy asks, will somebody find his body in the second reel? <laughs> Billy shows up, and the three talk about motives and how they're all suspects. The sheriff is also leaning towards Sidney's father being the killer. That night, everyone goes to Stuart's party. Everyone shows up, including the killer, who goes after Tatum first. She calls him Ghostface, and mostly beats the crap out of him until she gets stuck in the garage door and dies. Nobody called him Ghostface until now. Gail smuggles in a camera and films the party. Billy arrives, and he and Sidney make up and have sex. Uh-oh, she's doomed. Mm-hmm. Can't do that. Downstairs, Randy explains... Nope, 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 nope. Okay, yeah. They Downstairs, Randy explains the rules of mo horror movies. Only the virgins survive a horror movie. Meanwhile, Sydney's upstairs not being a virgin anymore. Outside, Dewey and Gail go for a walk to check out a car reported in a ditch, which turns out to belong to Sydney's father. The party breaks up when they get a call that the principal's body has been found. Sydney and Billy continue to talk about what if Billy was the killer. What do I have to prove to you that I'm not the killer, he asks. Then the killer walks in and stabs Billy. That's some pretty yeah, good evidence. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. Do, that'll do it. Ghostface then chases Sidney around the now-empty house. The chase continues out into the yard as Gail and Dewey return and find more bodies. Dewey gets stabbed in the back while Gail crashes the news van. Stuart and Randy run up screaming that they've found more bodies. They accuse each other of being the killer, while Sidney goes inside and locks them out. Billy staggers in, not quite dead yet. Sidney hands him the gun, and he shoots Randy with it. What? Yes, it was him all along, faking his wounds. She runs and finds Stuart, and it turns out he's in on it too. There, there are, are two, two of killers. Them. That explains so much. It does, yeah. It's so much harder to do a whodunit when it's they did it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Billy gloats that they framed Cotton Weary and killed Sidney's mother. They continue that there was no motive, it was just for fun. They pull out Sidney's father and plant the cell phone and voice changer on him. They're going to frame him for all the murders. Stuart and Billy then stab each other to make it look like they're victims too, and they argue about the movies as they stab each other some more. Yeah, they get a little carried away. Gail comes in with Dewey's gun. The gun's safety is on, so they take care of her. The distraction is enough for Sidney and her father to run away. Finally, Sidney puts on the costume and stabs Billy with an umbrella. She then finishes off Stuart. Gail comes in and finally shoots Billy, because, you know, they always get up that second time. They do. As the sun rises, Gail finally gets to report on a breaking news story. The end. Never see any of these characters again. Uh-huh. Yeah, till the next movie. All right, well, just about all the major characters from this 1996 movie eventually went on to have big careers, but most of them had only done a few things here and there prior to this. Probably the most famous person at the cast, at the time anyway, was Drew Barrymore, who died in the opening scene. It's been said a million times in a million other reviews before this one that the big thing with this film series is that it plays on well-established tropes of the horror genre and often subverts them to surprises. This kind of meta-film, full of references to other films, has been done lots of times since, but this was probably the first to do much of it. There's nothing supernatural, no monsters other than the human kind, but that doesn't make it any less tense and unsettling. It's got an element of whodunit to it, as most of the characters accuse each other at some point, and there are a few red herrings thrown in, but we aren't really sure until the end if it's anybody we know at all, much less whether it's a known character. And the fact that there were two killers really threw, threw everybody off. Yes, it did. Everybody was like, oh, it's Billy. And then he got stabbed by the killer, so, okay. oh, oh, it's it not couldn't be Billy. Him. Yeah. No. 
But unfortunately, the franchise got awfully repetitive as the series went on, but the first one was excellent. Yeah. Then the second one, in 1997, was a little less excellent. Oh, we didn't read the credits for the first one. Uh, Directed by Wes Craven, written by Ken Williamson, stars Nev Campbell. You say Nev or Neve? I think it's Nev. Nev Campbell. Courtney Cox, David Arquette. Uh, The second one runs two hours, and really it's exactly the same credits for all of them except the last one. So, yeah, no more of those credits. Same characters over and over and over. I guess that's a spoiler that nobody dies. Yeah. (laughs) They keep coming back over and over. Yeah, even Dewey who gets stabbed. I think he gets stabbed in every one of them, Mm -hmm. doesn't he? Yeah. Uh (laughs) I think Gail gets stabbed in most, or shot, or something in most of them. wounded, yeah. Yeah. Uh Well, they they all get banged up. How about number two? What's the spoiler-free? It's a decent sequel. Still entertaining, but not as clever or original as the first one. It's still a whodunit with some surprises, and it's worth checking out if you've seen the first one. And you positively do want to see the first one before you see this one. Yeah. You don't have to see them all. You can see one and five, but if you're going to watch them all, do them in order. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so this one's got, uh, it's got Sydney and it's got Gale, and it's got Dewey, and it's got Ghostface. Mm-hmm. And do we really want to read this whole description? They're away at college now. Oh, they're, they're away they're, at college. They've gone beyond, yes. beyond high school. Yeah, same characters. Gale is still a, a, trying to be a big name news person and author. And there's new characters that are victims. <laughs> Lots of those, <laughs> yeah. yes. Sydney has a new boyfriend. And, of course, you know, he becomes a suspect, and, you know, everybody's suspecting each other. And is there anything else, you know, really super relevant that we need to... I think the interesting chasing, twist on this one is who the stabbing. killer is. Because mm-hmm. in the beginning, with the, in the first movie, when he's killing um, Drew Barrymore, one of the trivia questions was, who was the killer in Friday the 13th? Mm-hmm. Who was the killer in Friday the 13th? She mm-hmm. insists it was Jason. Uh-huh. Who was it? His mother. Yeah. And, and who's the, the second killer one, in this one? Was it Billy? No. It Billy's mother. His mother. Yeah, uh-huh. exactly the same thing. Yeah. Oh, and there's our spoilers. Yeah. Okay, for well, number Cotton, two. And Cotton is in this one, too. He has been released from prison because yeah. he didn't do anything. And he and, becomes yeah. deeply enmeshed in the story. Yes. He wants to be vindicated. He wants to tell his story on TV. Mm-hmm. And at the end, he get, he's the big hero. He gets his chance. And he goes on in the third one to have a big uh, big, career, big success, yes. big career. Okay, uh, so again, in number two, there are a huge number of meta, self-referential horror film tropes that are used and thrown out. There are a lot fewer suspects this time, since we saw most of the main characters running or avoiding Ghostface at one time or another. Mickey was that guy we saw a bit early on that sort of vanishes in the middle, so it pretty much had to be him. And it was him, but it was also his... Billy's mother, so mm-hmm. two killers again. And throughout, they, they play on the trope, but there's still the trope of, you know, they, they knock the killer down, they knock the killer out. He's I lay, think he's laying there. Ghostface gets beat up Ghost more face, than any other Ghostface gets beat up a lot. Yeah, he does. And at no point do they, hey, let's, you know, hit him repeatedly while he's down. Make or sure he stays down. while he's laying down there knocked out, you and could take at least his take mask his mask off. off. Or at yes. least that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but they never do. And yeah. there's multiple times throughout these movies and even Sydney, who should know better. <laughs> you know? I think it was in, in the last one, the newest one, after years and years of thinking about this stuff, she doesn't take his mask off when she has the chance. Yeah, or keep hitting him repeatedly while he's down. <laughs> no. Okay, so number two, well, it's fine. It's nowhere near as unique or clever as the first film, but it's a fair follow-up with all the survivors of the first film returning. Then we skip a couple of years ahead with Scream 3 from 2000. So, Scream 1 was 96. Scream 2, I think, was probably done in a hurry because of the success in 97. Mm -hmm. They took a little more time with Scream 3. And how's our spoiler free? Well, it's another bit of a step down in this one. It's still decent and entertaining, but the sequels aren't getting stronger as they go along. It's a whodunit again, of course, with a clever script that leaves you guessing until the big reveal. And you will enjoy this one much more if you see the first two beforehand. Yeah. So this one, they stop having movie, tr- watch, you know, watching the movie tropes, the movies that we watch, and it's more Hollywood filmmaker type tropes. Because they're they're making these movies in the movie Stab, which is based on 
what happened based on the events that happened. And they keep making more stab movies. And in this one, they're working on stab three. Yeah. And so there's movie set of the original movie. So it's like, you know, the movie, the original movie stuff comes back as a movie set within this movie. So that was kind of clever. <laughs> it's kind of like a redo of the first one in some ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the reporter, Gail Weathers, wrote a book called Stab after the first movie. And they made it into a movie series, Stab 1, Stab 2, Stab 3. I don't know which one they're making during this one. but the, I think it's Stab 3. The Stab movies, yeah. I know in the final one, they're talking about Stab 8 at one point. So they really got carried away. Apparently the yeah. meta movie is way more successful than the real ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, we start out with uh, Cotton Weary, the uh, accused murderer from the first movie and the redeemed hero in the second movie. Oh, he's a big celebrity now. Yeah, he's stuck in a traffic jam, and he gets a call from a woman who recognizes him from his TV show. Then the voice changes to that of Ghostface, who claims to be in the house with Cotton's girlfriend. He wants to know where Pr- Sidney Prescott lives. Cotton rushes home to Christine, who is currently being chased all over the house by Ghostface. This time... Ghostface threatens her in Cotton's own voice. She, she thinks it's him. Apparently the voice changer has numerous settings. And they never explain how he gets people's voices. So. No. In this one, it's it's used a lot. Magic. And it's specific people's voices. And all these people from all these movies all have exactly the same voice synthesizer. And there are no survivors mm-hmm. that would have known what it sounded like. Well, the real Cotton arrives home, and Christine tries to kill him in self-defense, but Ghostface is still there and kills them both. Credits roll. All right. So Sydney now lives on a farm. She's got some high security, and she avoids everyone. she got a, what do you call it, a dial-in job? Mm-hmm. Remote work. Yeah, yeah, remote work, so she doesn't have to talk, see people. With her dad. Yep. Yeah. The Stab 3 movie is in production. And uh, Dewey and Gale decides that someone is hunting for Sydney, so they eventually track her down. And guess what? Somebody is hunting for Sydney. It's Ghostface. And Sydney comes to the movie set and gets all involved with all these people. And, and she runs through yeah. the fake house that they built to pretend to be her house in the movie. And, and there's a detective, Kincaid, who's working the case. Oh, yes, yes. Who becomes, uh, is he a suspect or not? You know. He sure you, looks like a suspect you, through you, most of it. Yeah, so you're left wondering, you know, is whose side is he on? Okay, so the killer in this one end up getting a gun from one of the characters and shoots Sydney a couple of times, and it turns out she's tricked him. She's wearing a bulletproof vest, and she kills the killer, and it's the end. Afterwards, Dewey proposes to Gale, and off screen, unmentioned that uh, Detective Kincaid and Sydney get married which doesn't really come up. There's a very brief mention in the fifth movie. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to be in the fourth movie, but had scheduling problems, so they kind of didn't mention it. Oh, what's the actor's name I'm blanking out on? Oh, my goodness. He was that guy. uh, Dr. McDreamy. Yes, yes. (laughs) um, It'll come to us. You're going to have to look that one up. (laughs) All right, so here in Scream 4, We've completely run out of horror movie tropes and have moved into the realm of filmmaking tropes. As Randy explained in his post-mortem video, a bunch of unknown things are revealed about Sidney's mother, which leads to all the drama. And of course, in this one, they talk about the rules of movie trilogies. Patrick Dempsey. Yes, it is. And it was a fun touch having the action happen on a set recreation of Sidney's house out of the first movie, which is kind of a movie within a movie thing. And again, it's fine. But it's another step down from part two. These were all on a steep decline. Step down from part three. Step Stepping down. Step Scream four. One more step down. Yeah. <laughs> it This one happens 11 years after the first one, so quite a bit of time has passed. And it's basically, it's the same thing. Uh, two girls talk about Jigsaw and the film Saw 4. They're not talking about Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street anymore. They're talking about newer movies. One girl has a Facebook stalker, just to let you know when this takes place. The phone rings, and it's the voice. The doorbell rings, and there's nobody out there. Two separate ghost faces then kill both girls. Wait, this is a stab movie. That was just stab. Rachel and Chloe turn off the movie. They were watching Stab 6. The sequels don't know when to stop. They just keep recycling the same old shit, whines Rachel. Then Chloe stabs her. Did that surprise you? Wait, 
It's another Stab movie. Jenny and Marnie turn off the copy of Stab 7 they were watching, and Jenny explains it is like a movie within a movie. Still, it's based on a true story, which happened right here in Woodsboro. The phone rings, and Marnie answers. No, nope, it's just Jenny playing a joke. Jenny comes downstairs and finds Marnie's body. Oop, the chase is on. A very short chase. The actual credits roll for Scream 4, if you weren't quite sure anymore. <laughs> kind of lost track. So they had a movie within a movie within a movie within a movie, and yeah, okay, all right. So this time it's 11 years later. Sydney is a best-selling author going to a book signing for her own title. And I don't think it has anything to do with Stab. <laughs> no, it's more of a self-empowerment. Yes. Getting out of dark places, things like that. Because she is so over all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, then they, they get out there about these people that were died, and Gail gets in there, <clears throat> and Gail gets uh, De Dewey involved, and there's other characters involved, too, and guess what? There's lots more running, stabbing, screaming, and dying. Mm -hmm. And at the end, hey, they kill the killers again. Yeah, they sure do. So that ended, that, it, it did have kind of an interesting ending, though. Oh. <laughs> hated, hated, hated the ending of this one. Okay, the ending happened. The big climax happens in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Jill, uh, Jill is the, one of the, the main cousin. character in this one, and she wakes up in the hospital, and they reveal that Sydney is in the ICU. She's probably going to be fine. She might be fine. It's touch and go. She's barely conscious. Dewey made it sound, you know, like she's critically wounded in ICU, and she did take a severe stab to the gut. She was severely wounded. Yeah, right. and then the her and the killer end up fighting, and they roll around on the floor, and they fight, and they punch, and they kick, and she's got this gaping hole in her stomach, and yeah. And, and no sign of that she was in an ICU. It was just a regular room, and yes. she was fine. She was awake. And, and there apparently is no not, no nurses, enough. no doctors, no sick. There's one dead security guard, one dead cop. And all this ruckus and gunshots and... No one no comes. No one comes. There no was one's never in the a hospital. nurse to be seen. Yeah. So, yeah, you find that a little incredulous, do you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I hated the ending. <laughs> hated it. All right, that ending, though. There are apparently no nurses, orderlies, or security in this ICU. None that would hear all the gunfire, screaming, and people be getting beat over the head with bedpans. These films do have a knack for introducing a whole bunch of new characters quickly, so the suspect pool is always large, at least in the beginning. And, as before, there are two ghost faces... And But neither of these two were huge surprises this time. It wasn't terrible, but it was far less inspired than its predecessors. And again, none of these movies are truly awful. They're just... Well, we watched them in order, in sequence, over a weekend. And we were like, oh, Scream 4. It's more of the same. <laughs> Only not as good. They do get old. <laughs> Space them out if you're going to watch them all. Yeah, probably. All right, and then the new one, Scream 2022. Which was like a breath of fresh air after watching number four. Directed by Matt bettinelli Open and Tyler Gillette. Written by James Vanderbilt, Guy Busick, and Kevin Williamson. Stars the same people, Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, David Arquette. Hour and 54 minutes, and all of these movies we have linked to trailers on YouTube. So did you like it? Yeah, I did. Okay, yeah, I did too. All right, so got a little trailer thing here. Uh, Buyer Rent, the all-new Scream movie tonight on digital. Starring Nev Campbell, David Arquette, and Courtney Cox, the new hit movie is certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, and critics are calling it 100% terrifying. Buy on digital today and get killer bonus content, including deleted scenes, cast interviews, and much more. Available at participating retailers, rated R from Paramount Pictures. And of course, if you're on HorrorBulletin.com, signed up for the newsletter, you might just we get a free copy. We have codes to give y'all. Yeah. Okay, so this one's got more secrets, more surprises, more stabby stabs, and more chases and suspense. This one was a cut above the fourth film, and word is there is a sixth on the way. May the upward trend continue. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to actually read some of the synopsis here, but not to the point of spoilers. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you do want to spoil the thing, go to the horrorguys.com and look it up. Tara is home alone. The voice calls and asks for Christine, who isn't there. He claims to be in group with Christine. The topic of scary movies comes up, and Tara says her favorite is the Babadook. 
We've updated a bit. How do you say you don't like horror without saying you don't watch horror? Hmm. The Babadook. It's a horror movie. It is. But like she talks, it, it's elevated horror. Yes, <laughs> and they have a discussion on elevated horror, which he says he thinks it sounds boring. He prefers the Stab series. They talk about girls at home alone talking on the phone. The, ca- the call starts out nice and civil, but gets creepier as it goes along. Soon the voice is texting from her friend Amber's phone. The phone trivia goes badly. Credits roll. Richie and Sam are a couple. Sam gets a call from Wes, who talks about Tara being attacked last night. Tara is Sam's sister, and she survived the attack. Richie explains that he's never seen any of the Stab movies, even though most of them are based on things that really happened there in Woodsboro. They arrive at the hospital, where we meet a whole new crew of young victim I mean characters. Chad, Mindy, Amber, and Wes are all there. Bully Vince picks on the gang at the local bar. Was he supposed to be a teenager? An, an older teen, I think. Like, Much older. You know, graduated. Like 40s. And then he, when he leaves, Ghostface kills him far too easily. Meanwhile, at the hospital, Richie is binge-watching the Stab films on Netflix because he says, I just want to be prepared. Sam has a psychotic vision of Billy from the first film. When are you going to tell her why all this is happening? You should probably cut it there as far as... Yeah, I think so. Synopsis goes. And Billy is uh, Billy Crudup. That's his name, right? Hmm? Who is Billy? The The, actor. The actor? No, no. um, Not Billy Crudup. Uh, Oh. You're going to make me look it up, aren't you? Yeah. Skeet Skeet Ulrich. Skeet Ulrich. Yes, Yes. right. Wrong Billy. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, and they have de-aged him. He's looking just like he did in the first movie because he died at the end of the first movie and... He's back, but Mm -hmm. sort of as a ghost version. Yes. The other characters are all back from the previous movies. Uh, Some of them are from the fourth movie. Some of them are from the first movie, and they're all looking quite a bit stretched out. But they got the young and the old together, and they all have a good time. Yeah. And things happen. Yeah. Ghostface, in my opinion, seems a lot more violent and vicious this time around. Yeah, I thought so. The gore effects are much improved, and there's a lot more than just blood spatters this time. They step it up a bit there, too. One character gets a knife through the neck, which is particularly gross. And believe it or not, they finally do. I'm not going to spoil it, but they finally do kill a main character. <gasps> no. Which I think it would have made the series a lot more interesting if they did that like part two or three. <laughs> One thing I didn't like was that the, the kill, two killers again stop using knives after a while and start shooting people with guns. I mean, maybe that's more realistic, but that kind of takes away from it. After all, the book, the meta book in the story is called Stab, not Mm -hmm. Shoot. Yeah. It was all right, but I'm not sure if it qualifies as a requel. And there's a big long scene where they talk about the rules of requel movies. Right. Kind of a reboot, reboot, kind of a prequel. Mm -hmm. So kind of a sequel, kind of a reboot is a requel. Right. And still, a lot of characters did survive this one to be in the inevitable next part. I still wonder why it wasn't called Five Cream. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So, yeah, sign up over at HorrorBulletin.com and get your free copy, probably. Uh, We've got some other old giveaways to clear out. We're going to clear out our... our Clean out the skeletons in the closet. (laughs) Clean out our (laughs) leftovers. So even if you don't get the latest screen, we've got a couple other good ones to give away. And we'll see you next week. See ya. With five more movies. They won't be Scream. They won't be Scream. You may Scream by the time it's over. We probably Scream watching them. Yeah. Ah, so scary. I'm Brian. I'm Kevin. We'll see you next week. See ya. See ya.